Hello, Sima. Yes, sir. So I think we'll start now. Okay. So good evening, everyone. Uh, today we have Sima with us. Sima completed her bachelor in optometry from in NSHM uh, Knowledge Campus, Durgapur, in 2018, and she also did uh, internship in Seal Gupta Institute. And after that, uh, she went for PGDVS from LB Prasada Institute, and this year only she completed. Uh, currently, she is working in uh, Gita Sri Retina Institute, that is in Dhanbad, Jharkhand. And uh, Seema did uh, her PGDVS specialization in anterior segment and contact lenses. So today she would be talking about orthokeratology, basics of orthokeratology. So I think Seema, uh, uh, you can start now. Yeah. So good evening, everyone. My name is Seema Kumari. Today I will talk about the basics of orthokeratology. So these are the points I am going to discuss in the next slide. So before starting it, I just want to give a brief history about the orthokeratology, where the idea of orthokeratology came from. Basically, the idea came from Chinese population. In Chinese population, they were used to apply load over the closed eyelid during sleep to decrease the myopia. That time, they were using a sand of bag over the closed eyelid. So it was giving the clear vision. After that, in 1962, Jason, he was an optometrist. He described the orthofocus technique. In that technique, the lens was either fitted steep or flat to alter the curvature of the cornea. By steepening the cornea, it was correcting the hyperopia or by flattening the cornea, it was correcting the myopia. So uh, later on, the orthofocus technique named as orthokeratology or orthoke, also known as uh, vision shaping treatment or corneal refractive therapy. Uh, I'm not going too much deeper into the history part of the orthokeratology. Just, I'm just uh, let's start with the definition of the orthokeratology. So it is made up of three words, orthokeratology. Ortho is a straight, Corn, uh, keratom means cornea and ology is the knowledge. So it is aimed to reshape the cornea. It is a non-surgical and topographical approach to correct the refractive error. Basically, these are the gas permeable contact lenses that is worn overnight to change the corneal curvature. So this is the lens structure of the ortho -K lenses. Uh, it is based on the reverse geometry design. Uh, if you see the uh, yellow color is the uh, cornea and uh, red one is the uh, design of the orthocale lenses. So in reverse geometry design, the, uh, the, center of the, the center of the lens will be flat and mid periphery will be steep. But in conventional design, the center will be steep and the mid periphery will be flat. There are uh, four important curves in this uh, reverse geometry design. First is base curve. Base curve, this is also called treatment curve. Uh, second is reverse curve. Third is alignment, uh, alignment curve or fitting curve. Fourth one is the peripheral curve. So what are these and how they help in the uh, treatment of the cornea and how um, they, uh, uh, how they uh, are help in the fitting of the contact lens. So I will discuss these, uh, uh, these four curves uh, in the next slide. So before uh, fitting the uh, uh, orthocale lens, you should know about the uh, terminology which is used uh, during the parameter selection. So first is the base curve. It is also known, uh, known as the treatment curve. This is the central, uh, uh, central part of the contact lens. This is the main uh, pressure point for the vision correction. It, this curve uh, will only change when you uh, get a more vision correction. This, this will uh, not change the fitting of the contact lens. By, but in conventional lenses, if you change the base curve of the contact lens, the uh, fitting of the contact lens will also change. But in the orthocale lenses, 
it is not for the fitting purpose it is the base curve is only for the treatment purpose so second important uh, important curve is the return zone depth this is also called reverse curve so it is just it is just outside of the base curve and uh, where the contact lens lift of the cornea and uh, it is a s shaped uh, sigmoid shaped curve and measured in microns of the sagittal depth the sagittal depth is the, the distance or space between the cornea and the contact lens if uh, greater the uh, greater the return zone depth greater will be your sagittal depth so by changing this sagittal depth you can achieve a good centration and fitting of the contact lens so th uh, third point is the landing zone angle it is the area where first uh, touch the cornea tangentially the primary function of this uh, alignment curve is to provide uh, appropriate edge lift so everyone is uh, getting my point this this is very important for uh, orthokeratology fitting any question in this uh, uh, slides Sima, uh, if any question will come, I will let you know. Or otherwise, we'll take all question in the. Okay, okay. So, how does ortho K works? So, when the ortho K is placed on the cornea, the there is a uh, th uh, there is it works with the uh, tear film layer to flatten the uh, to flatten or reshape the cornea. So, there is a uh, thin layer in the center. compared to mid periphery the due to difference in the uh, uh, tear film layer it will create a positive push force in the center and negative pull force in the mid periphery so that will uh, cause a um, uh, uh, compression in the uh, epithelial cell in the center and negative uh, pull force will help to elongate the epithelial cells in the periphery so this is how the uh, positive uh, Push force will uh, flat the central cornea and negative pull force uh, uh, stiff the mid peripheral cornea. Uh, along with these forces, also closed eyelid uh, pressure uh, plays an important role in the in the fitting of the, in the compression of the cell uh, epithelial cell and uh, the redistribution of the epithelial cells. so if you see uh, it will uh, if you see this video you will get more clear so ortho k is placed on the cornea so the center of uh, the center of the lens is creating a positive push force and a negative pull force in the mid periphery of the cornea this is uh, if you see this yellow color uh, these are the uh, epithelial cell so this is how the central cornea become flat and mid peripheral cornea become stiff so uh, before the start uh, starting the fitting of ortho k lenses you should know about what are the indication and contra indication of the ortho k lenses so uh, it can correct uh, up to 6 diopter of myopia according to paragon crt lenses but in boson lomb it can correct up to minus 5 diopter of myopia and astigmatism it can correct up to minus 1.75 diopter with the uh, rule astigmatism it won't correct against the rule astigmatism and it also uh, some study says that it also correct hyperopia and uh, press biopia with the ortho k but it is a more uh, difficult treatment for the hyperopia and the press biopia of course the uh, 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 k reading should not be too steep or too flat it should be lie within the 37 diopter to 52 diopter and in ortho k lenses according to paragon crt lenses there is no age restriction for the ortho k fitting lenses 
so it is contraindicated in those patient who are the failure of the rgp lenses any disease of the cornea conjunctiva or the lids and uh, of course it won't correct uh, against the rule astigmatism if greater than 0.75 diopter it will correct it, it won't correct uh, internal astigmatism also so to fit the ortho ke lenses is you should have uh, the uh, this baseline data first is the svid uh, horizontal uh, visible iris diameter uh, to select the uh, diameter of the contact lens pupil size of course plays an important role because it's always small pupil size are good candidate for the ortho ke lenses uh, larger larger pupil size may complain of glare or photophobia during the night keratometry to select the flat k value uh, k value and corneal topography is very important uh, to see the um, uh, patient having uh, normal uh, corneal topography or not and it it will help to uh, assess the concentration and uh, treatment zone of the orthocalenses uh subject uh, subjective refraction will uh, help to identify whether uh, uh, whether the patient is eligible or not for the ortho ke lenses also slit lamp by my bio microscopy to see the ocular surface health and tear evaluation with the fluorescence so how will calculate the initial lens parameter uh, you have to remember three points to calculate the lens parameter first identify the flat k then use the slide ruler to find out the first trial lens third point, third important point is the uh, manifest refraction sphere it is not the spherical equivalent it is the sphere value of the subjective acceptance so it is the slider uh, of the, uh, this is the slide tab of the paragon crt paragon crt is uh, providing this with the trial boxes so uh, this is the uh, these are the k value uh, mrs value and corneal diameter so first you have to select which one is your flat k value uh, uh, suppose here k1 and k2 so you have to first find which one is the k value so here 42 uh, 40 is the your flat k value then you have to find out the which one is uh, your mrs value uh, so here minus 3.75 is your mrs value this is the uh, sphere of the subjective uh, acceptance not the cylinder part so if you zoom this one it will uh, more clear so first you have to uh, slide the rule uh, until you get the correct flat k so uh, if you uh, if you see here the arrow is pointing towards the 40 uh, we have 40 diopter which is your correct flat k value after that you have to see uh, right side there is mrs value you have to find out the which uh, which uh, one is your mrs value so our mrs value was minus 3.75 so in the next slide you will get more clear so uh, here minus 3.75 is your mrs value so your initial lens uh, lens parameter will be appear in the left side of the window so this will be your parameter first trial lens parameter 88 550 and 33 so 88 uh, is the your base curve and uh, 550 is your return uh, return zone depth and uh, 33 is your landing zone angle so take uh, one more example suppose your subjective uh, refraction is minus 3 with minus 1 diopter cylinder with the rule astigmatism and k value k1 is 44.87 and k2 is 46 diopter so first identify the uh, flat k value here uh, 44.87 is your flat k value and your mrs value is minus 3 diopter so first uh, slide the tab until uh, arrow appears to a correct flat k so here uh, your flat k is 44.87 so if you see the arrow is pointing towards the correct flat k value 44.87 then you have to see 
towards the left side of the slide mrs value your mrs value is minus 3 so if you see uh, this is your minus uh, mrs value so your uh, parameter uh, parameter will appear to the left side of the window in the same row so this is your parameter for the right eye 82 550 and 34 so this is how we are selecting the parameter for the ortho k lenses same procedure we will do for the left eye so uh, what are the ideal uh, fitting characteristics for the ortho k lenses the it should uh, that in in ortho k lenses the treatment zone should be 3 to 4 mm this black portion is the your treatment treatment zone of the ortho k lenses so this should be uh, the ideal uh, ideal treatment zone should be 3 to 4 mm and uh, also the uh, lens should be well centered from limbus to limbus it should not cross the limbus and edge lift should be uh, uh, appropriate uh, edge lift is the the space between the uh, cornea and edge of the uh, cornea and the uh, edge of the contact lens it should not touch the cornea so uh, with fluorescent uh, with fluorescent appearance of uh, with fluorescent pattern uh, it will appear a uh, uh, ring shape width so uh, to see the floor, uh, edge lift you have to see this uh, width so it should uh, the ideal edge lift is 0.2 to 4 mm so if uh, the fluorescence is appearing in the periphery that means your the contact lens is not uh, touching the cornea there is uh, some gap also uh, and uh, it should reveal the black green black green pattern this this is called the bull's eye pattern so um, try, always try to achieve bull's eye pattern in ortho k fitting so after fitting what to do so if uh, uh, your lens is uh, lens fit is acceptable then do over refraction visual acuity and manifest refraction and uh, you are thinking that key lens is uh, uh, lens fitting is uh, acceptable acceptable and refraction is also uh, acceptable then you uh, give the lens for one day home trial after uh, and ask the patient to wear this lens during the sleeping for at least 8 hours and after uh, that uh, you have to call the patient next day with the contact lens on the eye so that day uh, i mean post up one day you have to uh, do uh, visual check visual acuity over refraction and also the fitting evaluation with the contact lenses and after that uh, everything is done then uh, you have you you have to remove the contact lens and then send for the topography topography is uh, why topography because to see the area of flattening or the treatment zone after 6 uh, hour after uh, after 6 hour of the remove of the lens you have to check the visual acuity to see uh, to see the step uh, whether the vision is stable or not and and also see the regression in the vision and um, Uh, after that you have to again do over refraction and uh, after that you can distance the lens and call the patient for follow up after one week so what are the problem uh, you have to face uh, after fitting the ortho k lenses it could be uh, the lens could be under corrected or over corrected patient may complain of glare or photophobia lens become decentered uh, also corneal distortion and corneal staining so first three i am going to discuss in the next slide so uh, what are the reason for under treatment and over treatment there are basically there are uh, two primary reason for the under treatment and over treatment it it can be due to inaccurate base curve or due to excessive sagittal depth to find this one whether it is due to base curve related to base curve or, or 
related to the excessive sagittal depth. So first perform an over refraction. If in over refraction you are not getting plano to plus 0.5 diopter, it is most likely that the base curve uh, is inaccurate. So suppose you are getting minus power in over refraction, it means you uh, fitted the contact lens that is uh, too steep. So you have in that case you have to flatten the base curve by 0.1 mm for every minus 0.5 diopter. Same with the plus power if you are getting plus power in the over refraction. That means you fitted the contact lens is too flat. So it is need to steepen the base curve by 0.1 mm for every 0.5 diopter. Also, the uh, asked about the compliance, how many hours they are using to never. Uh, if the uh, over refraction is within plano power to point, uh, plus 0.5 diopter, it is most likely due to the excessive sagittal depth. So, uh, to uh, reduce this one, correct this one, reduce the land, uh, landing zone angle by one degree until you get the clear vision if you are not if you are not getting clear vision then uh, keep the landing zone angle same and uh, change you uh, change your uh, return zone depth in 25 micron steps so the uh, the cause of the glare and photophobia is due to small treatment zone when you will get a small treatment zone, uh, if you are uh, correcting high refractive error, so that time you will get a small treatment zone. So uh, if you correct this one, uh, if you improve the treatment treatment zone, the patient no, patient may not have vision 2020. So in this case, you have to go counsel the patient also. Um, uh, the second cause of the glare and photophobia is the uh, decenter uh, treatment of the lens. It can be correct by improve the centration to ad by adjusting uh, adjusting the uh, return zone depth or landing zone angle or by increasing the diameter. Third cause of glare or photophobia could be large pupil. Always uh, always small size pupil is uh, are the better candidate for the ortho k fitting uh, in this case you have to uh, increase the optic zone and also counsel the patient so if your lens uh, become uh, uh, decentered superiorly it is the flat fitting characteristic and um, in that case uh, it will induce the with the uh, with the rule astigma astigmatism why with the rule or because of the lead movement, it will uh, it will uh, it will cause a with the rule astigmatism. And in uh, in uh, topography, this is the topography after the removal of the lens. So here, uh, red uh, red color uh, shows the uh, steepness of the cornea, and uh, blue color shows the flattening of the cornea. And green uh, is the normal. So. If you see this uh, topography pattern, you will get a smiley face topographic pattern. And uh, it, uh, if you see here, there is a uh, crescent shaped area of steepening in the pupillary zone and area of flattening will uh, shift towards the shift uh, towards uh, the superiorly. So in the why this happened because if in uh, if you have uh, had chosen a uh, excessive edge uh, excessive sagittal depth in that case uh, the lens become lens become too uh, why this happened because it, if you had chosen a uh, too uh, too shallow uh, sagittal depth or return uh, return zone depth. Uh, the, le uh, the lens will become flat. So in this case, you have to uh, increase the sagittal depth to improve the centration of the contact lenses. Uh, 
in inferior lens uh, decentration it is a uh, stiff fitting characteristics it will also uh, in, uh, induce with the rule astigmatism due to due to lead movement in topography it will uh, uh, give a frowny face uh, pattern if you see here there is a crescent shaped area of stiffening in the um, uh, pupillary zone and the area of flattening is shift uh, downwards if you see this blue color, this is the area of flattening. So it, it is shifted to us uh, uh, inferiorly. So why this happened? Yeah, in this case, uh, if you are if you had chosen a too, um, uh, too high uh, sagittal depth, in that case, you will get uh, inferior lens decentration. So to correct this one, you have to flatten the uh, lens by uh, decreasing the uh, sagittal depth. So central island is the stiff fitting characteristics. So in this case, the visual acuity will be poor and it is the indication, it is the one of the indication of the residual refractive power. So if you see here, there is a steep, uh, steep island within the flat central zone. So it uh, so it is happen if you are selecting a uh, larger uh, return uh, return zone depth. So in in this uh, case, you need to decrease the return zone depth. So lateral po uh, lens position, uh, the lens become laterally displaced if your cornea is against the rule elastic matism and also the eye tonicity of the eyelid, it, it will induce against the rule as astigmatism. There are, it is the uh, most uh, difficult fitting anomaly to correct because it has a uh, various cause. It may be due to, uh, due to excessive sagittal depth or, or uh, too low or too shallow sagittal depth. So, uh, and uh, it can so it is very difficult to uh, correct so to correct this one you can, you should uh, increase the diameter to improve the centration of the contact lenses so what are the advantage uh, advantages of the uh, ortho -K lenses so it is a reversible uh, reversible process and it can be correct uh, both uh, both eyes at the same time there is no uh, disruption in the vision during the treatment and there is no uh, pain compared to the PR, PRK or less sick. Uh, it is also a good option for the children children because uh, for or, uh, PRK and less sick, you have to wait uh, till your age is uh, 18 or 20 years. But uh, in ortho -K, it is not like that. It, uh, it also slow the progression of myopia. So the disadvantage, the disadvantage of uh, the ortho lenses is it is not a permanent solution and patient may become a regular uh, GP lens wearer. So it, the one, one more uh, disadvantage of the ortho lenses is, is that the amount of refractive error uh, which is corrected by ortho lenses is limited. Thank you, Seema. Uh, we do have a number of questions. Yeah, yeah. So we'll take one by one. Yeah. So first question is from Himanshu. Hmm. He's asking if there is any side effect of using orthoped lenses over prolonged use. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. It can... Uh happen uh, if uh, uh, there are many side effects uh, there is a corneal dis, uh, distortion it will induce with uh, astigmatism with the rule or against the rule astigmatism also uh, there is a corneal staining or the complication of the uh, ortho -K lenses it uh, it will hamper also the uh, also the endothel endothelium of the cornea Okay, 
so no so in case if the orthogonal lenses are very properly fitted so still there would be problem if the patient is using for a longer period of time orthogonal lenses uh, uh, can you repeat this question so uh, no this is a follow on the same follow up of the same question suppose a patient we have given them a uh, patient orthogonal lens for the long the, time uh, for uh, the long time means the patient can use those lenses for say one year two year Mm. so then there would be any side effect any uh, like any effect that we do not want undesirable effect uh, if a uh, fitting is not proper then, then you only, will get more yeah. side if effect the fitting is proper uh, fit i didn't see any uh, comp like like this means more complicated patient means i saw uh, if lens was i saw one patient that lens was decentered and it was not fitted well so in that case i in that case the the complication was very okay means it is less chances there would be any complication Huh. Are Why? Because in uh, one study, uh, uh, said said that um, due to reverse geometry design, or it is wearing in the night time, so that time the tear cell, uh, tear circulation inside the lens is absent. So and uh, it will uh, due and also with that there is uh, the cells are uh, compactly arranged. Uh, compactly arranged and uh, this will helps uh, to inhibit the uh, influx of water in the stoma so uh, this is uh, there is more uh, there is less chances of hypoxic changes in the uh, ortho k lenses in, uh, compared to the conventional rgp lenses okay so the next question is from himanshu sapra why not correct against the rule astigmatism is there any reason behind it and why only minus 1 1.75 diopter lens why not more than no no it can correct up to uh, it can correct uh, uh, against the rule astigmatism also but uh, up to minus 0.75 hmm so you wanted to know that uh, the, if uh, your uh, cornea is uh, against the rule astigmatism the the your fitting uh, the lens will decenter laterally hmm. will, so you lens will not, centration uh, is a very big issue in uh, against the rule astigmatism ha uh ha -huh. then uh, the current orthogonal lens is still uh, what astigmatism they are correcting How much? Minus one point seven five, but in off level we are correcting minus two also, minus two, minus two, two point five. But the we have to explain the patient. Uh, if vision will may not have twenty twenty or like that. Yeah. And it is spherical. What is the upper limit? Uh, minus six diopter. Okay. The vision will uh, good after the uh, up to four diopter, but according to Paragon CRT, CRT it can correct up to minus six diopter. Okay. Hello, Sima. Uh, sorry for interrupt. Uh, Sima, you will you will give the uh, spherical equivalent power or uh, a bit the cylinder? No, no. This is not the spherical equivalent power. This is the manifest subjective refraction. It is the sphere value of the. subjective acceptance not the spherical equivalent so how you correct the cylindrical power then i mean uh, you have to uh, in uh, in slider we are uh, in slider uh, in slider we are uh, only see the that uh, spherical value not the spherical equivalent Okay, so the next question is from Himanshu Bharadwaj. So, ma'am, is there any formula to find out lens parameter without using the Paragon CRT chart? Yeah, in we uh, empirically, you can fit this one, trial and error. 
there is no formula for ortho ke fitting other formula and it varies according to design so india mostly paragon is uh, distributing ortho ke lenses mm. but if you are using some another company design so this formula will change so ha yes, that is yes. according to the company and its design what lens design they are doing next question is from alina malik are there any age restriction for ortho k therapy i think no, no there is no the age restriction for the ortho k and what are the what are the characteristic of uh, well fitting ortho k lens on topography characteristics picture so the ideal fitting should be uh, the treatment zone should be 3 to 4 mm this is the your treatment zone the black portion and it should be well centered uh, it should not cross the limbus it should be limbus to limbus centered and the edge lift should be 0.2 to 4 mm and also the movement should be very less in the ortho k uh, ortho k lenses it could be minus it could be 0.5 to 0.75 it, it is not like the rgp lenses mm. and she is asking what tool set hmm? she is asking what would uh, what would be the like uh, topography picture topographical ideal fitting topography picture uh, in topography uh, you will see the central area will be flat and mid periphery this is this area will be sti uh, uh, steep and this this will area will also a little bit flatter and like you will get a flatter steep flatter like that pattern mm. so to add uh, alina in this so in the center like you have this concept in topography warm color or cool color so if it, uh, this uh, topography is this ortho k reshaping therapy is really working then in the center we will seeing the cooler color in the periphery you will be seeing the more warmer color yeah as this picture you can see in this topograph in this periphery you are seeing more warmer color although there is a like uh, not very well centered lenses but in the topography you can see that in the center it's flatter if you compare with the surrounding Uh, Sima, should I take another question? Yeah. The question from Anam: What should uh, be the follow-up schedule for ortho K users, and should we call follow patient? Follow-up uh, for ortho K is uh, first. You have to call for one day. Uh, there is a like, after uh, dispensing the uh, lens, you have to call after one day, and then after uh, one week, one week or one week, then after two week, then. Three months, six uh, six months, then one year. Okay, and the follow up question of that: Should we call patient in morning or at any time? What are in the, the morning? Roles? Okay. What are the roles of different curves, and what are the standard value for these curves, and how will we select these values? this curve yeah i think this curves on this she is asking no there is not uh, no any standard value for this curve i mean it will according to your uh, uh, k, uh, k value what is your reading what is your treatment zone mm. what is your uh, refractive power and what are the roles of this curve Hmm. So, uh, uh, base curve. Uh, this is the. Uh, this is uh, this is for the treatment purpose only. Like how uh, how much diopter you have to correct uh, the refractive error. So base curve is not uh, related to fitting purpose. In this in the ortho K lenses, but in uh, in RGP in normal RGP lenses, if you will change the base curve. Uh, uh the fitting will also change but in this case in uh, ortho k lenses the base curve will uh, base curve is to get more vision correction and uh, second is uh, return zone depth it is a uh, 
it the function of uh, this curve is to by increasing or decreasing uh, this depth you can uh, get a, a good centration and a fitting of the contact lens it, basically this should be fitting related and third curve is the um, third curve uh, landing zone angle or alignment curve it, it this curve will provide you appropriate uh, provide you uh, appropriate edge lift yes so the next question from mohini uh ma'am if anyone suffer from dry eyes is their candidates for, is they are candidate for ortho keratology no in uh, if a patient having dry eye or any other cornea problem we are not fitting uh, the ortho k lens okay. so the next question is from kanchan kumari uh ortho k is only for with the rule astigmatism or it can be used in all type of astigmatism can you repeat this question ortho k is only for with the rule astigmatism or it could be used for all kind of astigmatism uh, it will correct both but uh, it will correct uh, more uh, uh, with the uh, with the rule astigmatism uh, only uh, up to 0.75 uh, uh, against the rule uh, it will correct then uh... next question is from sachin sharma what are the indication and contraindication of ortho k lens you already have told i think so uh, yeah the myopia uh, it can be uh, corrected myopia up to 6 diopter and astigmatism of 1.75 diopter it uh, it also depend upon the product uh, if uh, it is boson lomb it will correct up to Minus five diopter only, and cylinder in Boson lamp it will correct up to minus one point five diopter. Hmm. So next question is from Anam Adi. In case of lateral decentration, we need to increase overall diameter to resolve it. Is there any standard value up to how much? No. Oh, uh... no uh, it is not compulsory ki, uh, that ki uh, uh, after increasing the diameter it uh, will uh, well center you have to also work with a landing zone angle or return zone depth so you keep on like try next lens uh, try an error type yes in lateral so... in lateral lens position hmm So next question is from Ritu. Uh, is ortho K safe for children, and why ortho K is not so popular compared to other lenses? Uh, can you repeat this question? Is ortho K lenses are safe for childrens, and why the ortho K lenses are not so popular when we compare with other lenses? Yeah, it could be safe. um uh, why it is not popular because it is very i mean it is very costly uh, for uh, lenses is um 12 one for uh, the cost of one lens is 12000 and also it is very uh, like patient are not allowing to uh, i mean parents are not allowing for the uh contact lenses due to uh, complication that and i think there is a lot of like negative publicity from the doctors ophthalmologists uh -huh. they will say that they, if the lenses patient is going to wear during sleep the lenses are not safe still most of the ophthalmologists they believe on that uh though lenses are not safe to sleep with the lenses but these lenses are designed in a such a way that patient can sleep even fda is approved these lenses for that so i think yeah. some of the reason for that is the doctors thinking 
and <laughs> when way they say and when they say to patient that these lenses are not safe then it's very hard to means convince patient and the other reason as seema already told like cost and also not very easily available not everyone is practicing even we do not have ortho lenses in our contact lens clinic uh, and uh, it's absolutely safe uh, in children there is no reason that you we cannot give in the children there is a question from thrusty care and maintenance method for ortho case same as in soft and rgb lenses or any other specifics same but uh, the only different is that uh, these lenses you have to wear during sleep uh, you can uh, sleep with the lenses but in normal rgb you can't sleep with the lenses and, and uh, all the all the uh, care and maintenance are same same uh, but you have to use the rgp care and maintenance rgp lenses care and maintenance would be the same and next question is uh, anam from anam what are the different lens material used in ortho uh, the material could be if it is paragon crt the material is a uh, papli focon d or b if it is a uh, the product is a uh, manicon z the material is a uh, tc filcon so it is it depends upon the company also uh, product also yes so next question is from alina malik uh, if for topography is displacing lateral lens the uh, decentration how should we modify the lens to achieve better centration first uh, you uh, you can increase the diameter until you get a proper fitting or centration if it will not then you uh, you have to also change uh, change the uh, landing zone angle or return uh, return zone depth to get a centration yes and uh, next question is from himanshu uh ortho k work like rgp except reverse geometry rgp correct 90% of astigmatism so when we do over correct refraction is it same in ortho k without giving slender power up to 1.75 or minus 2 diopter slender while we perform over refraction it is correct up to minus 2 diopter slender patani uh... you got the question himanshu can you repeat the question uh, sir like uh, the rgb contact rgb contact lens uh, correct uh, the astigmatism most of 95% astigmatism while we perform uh, while we perform the over refraction uh, uh, the you know ortho k lenses same is it same like the concept no no because uh, hello Good. Yes, uh, Seema. Uh, it is not like that. Uh, in normal RGP lenses, it will provide uh, like uh, regular uh, tear film. So that's why it was it 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 is correcting the astigmatism. But in uh, ortho k lenses, it will uh, like uh, there is a difference in the uh, tear film layer. So that's why that's why it not correct. so to add in this rgp lenses uh, the similarity between rgp and ortho k lenses are only in terms of material otherwise they differ significantly in design the ortho k retrology lenses are having totally a different design where you that made on reverse geometry design as seema explain in her previous slide it is based on reverse geometry and uh, that uh, uh, normal conventional rgp lenses that we use that is not based on the uh, reverse geometry it is uh, according to the geometry of the cornea so you cannot compare uh, rgp lenses with ortho k lenses in that sense that it will neutralize the uh, like astigmatism irregular cornea the purpose is totally different ortho k lenses are not for irregular cornea it is for normal 
very normal, very healthy cornea, uh, just to uh, overnight correction of myopia, mostly myopia. I don't know how much hypermetropia, how much it is successful in correcting hypermetropia. Plus three diopter. Plus three diopter, they say, like, but I don't think the results are very good. Yeah. Can I ask a question here? Yes. So, still, I didn't get uh, your voice is not clear. Too much noise. Uh, still, uh, now it's clear. Imanchu, can you type your question? So, oh, Sima, I think we have like we have taken all the questions. There are people who are appreciating Himanshu saying thank you, Sima. It is a great presentation. And I'm thank saying you, thank you so much, ma'am. So that's good. Means uh, uh, how many patients you have seen there in uh, like LBPI like coming for orthokeratology lenses on a Three day? Three or four. Each four. day. Hmm? Each day. Every day, three or four patients. No, no, not every day. But it is more uh, due to uh, in the like when they are giving the exam of uh, that uh, railway. That time, okay. patient are coming more. Correct. So that so time I saw three Paragon to four patients. Paragon only, na? Paragon. Uh, we are practicing Paragon only. Okay, so Yamasha is writing, still I did not get how we correct astigmatism with ortho -key lenses. You that want to take this? <laughs> so Yamasha, this is not uh, ortho -key lenses correct astigmatism. They, like it varies from uh, companies and design. They are all, in very recent day, ortho -key lenses, that is uh, toric ortho -key lenses also launched. So as Seema has explained in the like earlier slides, design, uh, where you have in the central, uh, uh, that is base curve, and then you have a landing zone, and then you have adjusting zone. So that design itself can, uh, neutralize some amount of astigmatism. It is not that they are specifically uh, uh, correcting uh, or designed for correct astigmatism, but because of the design is, uh, they can neutralize some amount of astigmatism. Only because when you are choosing a lens, so what you are taking into account basically is the spherical number. So that's why there is a limit of correcting astigmatism uh, from a certain amount. If the amount is going beyond that, these uh, spherical ortho -key lenses design are not helpful in correcting that astigmatism. So it's because of the design only. Okay. And then Okay, oh, the questions are coming. You want to take? How should I be WhatsApp? Seema? Hello? 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 some later time. Can you read the question? Yes. By the way, Manisha is there. She is saying thank you, Seema. And from Priya, how long will effect of ortho -key last? Yeah, it will come. It will The effect will come within uh, 14 days to one week to four, one week uh, to two weeks. Okay. One week to two weeks after how many days of use? 
uh, you have to use uh, like a regular basis like uh, how the how you are using the rgp lenses mm. so uh, if you are more using the uh, lenses your vision will be 2020 in the daytime if you are not using the lenses your vision will become slowly less okay and uh, why we are not recommended ortho ke lenses in high myopic patient from himanshu want correct uh, greater than minus 6 diopter that's why mm. himanshu again it's diopter. because of its design only mm. uh, you have seen the in the side as you are seeing in this slide there is a adjusting zone it can take up only that amount of uh, that cornea that is uh, kind of replacing from here and it is accumulating there so it, it is having some limit we cannot go beyond that limit so that is one of the limiting factor with ortho k lenses why there are two designs of ortho k rotational symmetric or for spherical error i don't know you got the question no so it's not a question i was Giving the answer to Manchu sir for astigmatism correction. Okay. Okay, Sima. I think we have done with the questions. People are saying thank you to you. Thank you. Manisha, do you want to say anything? Manisha. No. <laughs> वो भी टाइप करके ओके ओके सीमा सो थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर हैविंग दिस सेशन कैन वी हैव एनी फॉलो अप सेशन ऑन ऑर्थो के लेंसेस जिसमें वी कैन दैट वुड बी बेसिकली केस बेस जिसमें हम दो तीन केस को डिस्कस कर सकते हैं आई हैव द number but uh, now i don't have that uh, case That's report yeah. okay so think about if you can take any further session on ortho gel lenses okay okay and okay sima so thank you very much for coming on saturday tomorrow you have duty Yeah, yeah. Sunday <laughs> also. Okay, Sima. Okay. Thank you very much. Now I'm ending okay. session. Thank you all for joining. I think today uh, was our last session on uh, this uh, alumni series.